All right. So we get started. Um, like I said, the first question we are trying to answer today is why have a dashboard? Why is a dashboard important? So for me, whenever I'm trying to encourage people um, to report into a dashboard, um, it's like you're saying to someone, you, you want to know what progress you're making and you want that continuous feedback. You want, um, you want to know that you're on the course, right? So for me, it's like looking at a car dashboard. Um, when you start the car and the, you hear the sound of the, the car engine and you see the dashboard screen light up, immediately you know that, okay, things are going well. So it's like looking at the G4G dashboard. You can imagine if you opened up the G4G dashboard and there were no countries, there was no cohort reporting, it would worry you. But when you look at the dashboard and you see, okay, maybe it's not everyone that's reporting, but some people are reporting. We hear there are 24 countries and we can see at least 10 countries. It tells us that something is happening. But more importantly, you then want to know the details, just like when you put your foot on the accelerator and you see it move up to 80 kilometers per hour. You want to know, we're using the G4G dashboard, how quick are we going? So within the G4G dashboard, you will be able to see how your country is making progress in relation to the cohorts. For example, in South Africa, can someone from South Africa tell me how many cohorts are we aiming for this year? Karabu should know that answer. No one knows, it's 18 that we are going for, if you listen to Sheila. Um, and the question is, for example, now we are in April, how many cohorts have started or how many cohorts have graduated? Or maybe a question that the funders may ask is that they say, we said by 2025, we shall have reached 1 million uh, girls. We shall have reached 1 million mentees. Where are we in that? So that, that's what the dashboard is good. Very quickly, we will be able to get some good um, uh, visual information that with snapshot, you're able to tell, um, you're able to tell where, where, where the progress is. So that's for me, the value of a dashboard. In one picture, you get a snapshot of the performance of countries, of mentors, and of mentees at a specific point in time. So the dashboard is only as smart as the information that is put into it. If you're not reporting, if countries are not reporting, if cohorts are not reporting, the data doesn't go in there by magic. Um, you have to make that effort to put the data into the dashboard for it to then reflect what your progress is. So the dashboard is also good, the G4G dashboard, because it shows big picture performance. What do I mean? It will show you at a high level, for example, what Malawi is doing or what Uganda is doing or what Botswana is doing. But it will also be able, you'll be able to drill down so that you can see the detailed information. When you see 400 mentees behind Uganda, you can click on Uganda and you can see where it takes you to. The dashboard is also good because it allows us to compare performance across countries and across cohorts. I think it's important. For instance, when I look at Botswana, I am really amazed at them. They came from, I think just two years ago and they are already competing with South Africa, which is a bigger country. We've been in, in um, operation since 2019. So it already, they, that healthy competition uh, begins to brew. Or when you look at cohorts, you say, oh, why did you know University of Johannesburg have a 95% graduation rate vis-a-vis -vis, say um, um, cohort ABC that only had a 39 graduation rate? What happened over there? You, you, you want to try and figure out what did this cohort not do that the other one did? The dashboard also provides important information to G4G founders, management teams, so your board committees um, and things like that. Even your country team lead, or your national coordinator, a person like Karabo, it means she's very quickly able, if someone says to her, how many cohorts are, uh, have graduated in 2023, she can quickly go to the dashboard and pick it up. Um, the dashboard is also good because it has an easy submission process. And I, we're hoping that after today's session, you will see how easy it is. Um, it, it doesn't take a lot of work. 
because it's us who are doing the work um, in the background. So it has an easy submission process. Um, it has rigorous verification. In other words, you don't just submit and the data gets accepted into the dashboard. Um, when you submit, we take a look at the data and say, this is not making sense. When we add one plus two, we're not getting three, we are seeing five or we are seeing one. And we come back and we make you think through your data to make sure that you have accurate data that is being um, submitted. So it improves the quality and the reliability of the data that G4G um, is, is uh, generating. So the dashboard is an annual dashboard. This I need to emphasize. Initially, we thought we would just keep growing the dashboard. The first dashboard that we uh, generated was in 2020. It was in 2021. And then we did the 2022 dashboard, and now we are in 2023. The problem is we're working on Excel, so it becomes very heavy. So the trick that we have used um, because G4G doesn't have a lot of resources, is that we have annual dashboards. We collect for 2021 and we close off that dashboard. We then pull the data for 2021 and you're going to see what we call historical data. And then we keep adding the 2022 data. Then when we open the 2023 one, we pull forward the data from 2021 and 2022, and then we present the 2023 data. And you're going to see what I mean. So. It is, it is a way we have found to be cost effective and it allows the dashboard to remain light and agile so that we can share it with anyone. We don't have to host it onto a sophisticated database or system. It is really just sitting on Dropbox and anyone who says, I want to see the G4G dashboard, we're able to share it with you. So what can you see within the G4G uh, dashboard? You can see the countries that G4G is active in. You can see the past and you can see the present. Um, and you're going to see, uh, like I indicated to you, it's what we call historical data is uh, the past data. You can see the number of mentees and mentors per country. You can see them for this year, and then you can add them to the historical data for you to get a composite number. Um, you can also see the country and the graduation rates. Yeah, the, and the, the country and the cohort graduation rate. So for example, you can see the overall graduation rate for South Africa. And when you click on South Africa, you can see the 10 cohorts that were um, operational in 2022 or whichever year that it is. Karabu and um, Oratile, please help me keep admitting the guests. It keeps interfering with my presentation. Thank you. Um, you can also see within the G4G dashboard, the cumulative number of mentors trained by country. And this is very important that we can ask ourselves, why do we have 600 trained mentors in a country, but only 200 are active? Are we becoming a training institution? Are we not doing enough to link our trained mentors um, to cohorts? Or even people who are starting up, um, starting up cohorts, take Prudence, who I know is about to start up a cohort. Um, you can then say, wait a moment, why am I getting the same old, same old mentors who are already active on two or three other cohorts? Why don't we then go and pull in some new mentors so that we have a balance within our cohort? This is the way you can use the dashboard. Um, the dashboard also shows the number of mentors and mentees from previous years. I've explained that. And importantly, how close or how far we are from the 1 million target for mentees, okay? So that is what you will find in the dashboard. And slowly by slowly, I'm going to be unpacking this for you and sharing it with you. So now I'm going to share with you the contents of the dashboard. I'm not yet going to show it to you live. I'm just going to tell you what is within the dashboard. And this is because when we say the G4G dashboard, it is one Excel document. But hidden underneath it is about seven different subcomponents, and you're going to make note of them right now. And it has two basic areas. The first one is the mentee component. Yeah. So when we say we're looking at information for mentees, what can we find within the dashboard? So let me share with you. This is what we call the landing page. Typically, when you open the G, when you when when you click on the link that I we shared with you guys, you download the dashboard and it opens up. Typically, this will be the first page um, that comes up. Okay. Now, at the top, there is some generic information. It will tell you the number of countries. If you count the countries beneath here, you're going to see that there are ten. 
it will tell you because you're on the mentees dashboard and you know you're on the mentees dashboard because it is in color pink. You're going to see the difference between the mentees dashboard and the mentors dashboard. So because you're on the mentees dashboard, it's going to give you summary information on the mentees dashboard. So as of, as of, um, as of December, 2022, this is the year of the dashboard that I'm showing you. The selected year is 2022. There were 1,414 mentees that participated. We have to sometimes shorten the words because we are trying to get a lot onto, um, onto the dashboard. So here is the year. Anytime you're looking at a link that says it's taking you to a G4G dashboard, you need to confirm which year you're looking at. So for example, if you said, if, if um, uh, Mami Lane is not on the call, I think, right now. She's a chairperson of the Board of South Africa. But if she says to me, please send me the dashboard as we stand, I would send her the quarter one 2023 dashboard. So she would look and she would say, oh, OK, this is the year 20, uh, 2023, so that she knows she's looking at um, the most updated dashboard. Over here, this way it says updated to March 2023. It means that's the last time this dashboard that you're looking at was updated. Because, and you're going to hear some of the challenges we are facing, because of the delayed submission of cohorts and countries, it takes long for us to close off a dashboard. So you can imagine for the data ending December, 2022, we were only able to close on the 2nd of March, 2023, because we were still begging and asking and pleading for information to come through. But this tells you what that was the status as of um, uh, 2 March, 2023. So this tells you when it was last updated. Um, so let me now walk you through the mentees dashboard. I was giving you an overview. You're going to see this is pretty standard uh, when you, whichever um, segment of the dashboard you're in. So what do you find in the mentees dashboard? You will always see the countries. Your country will not appear if you have never submitted a report. So for example, Jennifer from Malawi might be asking, but wait a moment, G4G is active in Malawi. Why am I not there? They're not there because G4G had not yet graduated a cohort by the end of 2022. And therefore they had not submitted a, a, a cohort report um, for Malawi to be reflected over here. So the dashboard only reflects when they, it receives a cohort report from a country. It is that simple. You cannot be reflected in the dashboard if you're not showing progress. So here are the list of countries that submitted in 2022. Our concern is that we think there are a couple more countries that did graduate mentees, but are not reflected over here. They will not be reflected because they did not report. Okay, so here are the countries that reported. What do we see? What information does it tell us about the mentees? It tells us for Botswana, for example, there were 235 mentees that registered. For those of you who participated in the first training that we held in March, remember that what we do before you start uh, mentoring uh, the young ladies, you send out a registration form and a baseline assessment form. That 235 there for Botswana, for Botswana means 235 girls at, um, uh, completed the form and said, I want to be a mentee with G4G. However, only 188 participated. So the girls register, then they, the, the cohort mobilizes. When it gets started, that's where participation happens. So for us, we count participation as any girl that has attended at least one session. And then the girls that graduate are the ones that attend at least four sessions. So that's the cascade of information that you will see in the dashboard. Remember, we're looking for the most important information and we're presenting it in summary format. How many girls registered? How many girls participated? How many girls graduated? And then you will even be able to see on the dashboard um, the percentage uh, performance. So for example, for Botswana, there were 149 girls that graduated out of 188, which is a 79% uh, performance. So it tells us that, you know, how, how well is a country doing? So you remember we said we can compare across countries. So you can very quickly see Malaysia and Zimbabwe are stars. The lighting system that we see is very much like a traffic light. Red means 
I need a bit of interaction here. What does red mean normally? Stop. It means stop, or it means that there's a problem, right? Yeah. Yellow means caution. Like, okay, something is happening, but maybe you need to look a little bit, you know, a little bit deeper. And then um, green means things seem to be working very well. So the way the dashboard is, is calibrated, I think it's 50% and below, it would come up with a red. So you don't have any, any reds here. And then there's a range, I think, up until 90% between, that means between 51 and um, I think it's 89%, um, you will see it as yellow, meaning, okay, you're doing well, but maybe you can do better. Then 90% um, to 100%, you typically would, um, you would score a green. So that's the flashlight system. It is intuitive. No one needs to teach you that when you see red, when you see the red circle against your country or against your cohort, that it means that, wait a moment, something is not going, uh, is not going right. So that's, that's a beauty about the dashboard. Uh, you see it and it's speaking to you. On the right-hand side, you have an average of how all the countries are doing. Because you can imagine a person like Izana, who is the CEO of G4G. Yes, you know, her country is here, Malaysia is here. She can see her country results. But given her global portfolio, she's interested to see overall, how is G4G doing? So this average of all countries, it tells us that generally, you know, we're doing an 82% graduation rate, which is good. And then the other very important information is down here. We have a golden target of 1 million girls that we are trying to reach by 2025. Where are we good people? And so far, we at least as of the end of December 2022, the people who had reported, the data is showing us we had only been able to reach 8,090. Uh, mentees. So this is where you start asking questions. Should we be doing more? Should we be setting more realistic targets and things like that? So this is why the dashboard is good because it allows for that type of information um, uh, uh, to be discussed. So this is the first page of the mentees dashboard. But you remember, like I said, you can go deeper. Okay. So here we go. Botswana, we can say we want to look at what this Botswana performance actually is. So this is the sub part underneath the mentees dashboard. When you click on Botswana, it will tell you how many cohorts run in Botswana. There were nine. How many, how many mentees graduated? And you'll see when we go back to the main page, you would see that 149. And they all graduated in the year 2022. The beauty about it is that cohort leaders you will, for instance, of Orapa cohort, she'll be able to see that, oh my goodness, we did well. We had a 95% graduation rate. And then you would say, okay, maybe dream team, we're at 50%, maybe something needs to be done better next time. So this is a very good conversation piece. It means as countries, as cohort leads, maybe as chairpersons of boards, we need to reflect and say what happened right in a particular cohort. You know, no, we're not judging. All we're saying is maybe um, dream team, can go and learn from or upper cohort, you know, what it is that they did to get um, really good uh, performance. So this is how you drill down to the country. Then remember I said, you can see historical data, the past data. So for Botswana, they would be able to take their 149 mentees that, uh, uh, that, that, that graduated uh, within uh, uh, 2022 and add them to the historical data. So when you're live in the dashboard, anytime you hover, over the dashboard, it actually shows you the real number here because this is a screenshot, it's not showing up. But um, this indicates to you the previous number. So they probably had about maybe 90 uh, mentees um, that had graduated. So when you're putting information together, you would be able to add the year that you're looking at as well as the historical information. Okay, and, and again, just to point out that when you look at the historical information, it presents it with all the countries that historically participated. You will notice that in this dashboard, the historical one, it's more than 10 countries. There are some countries that are here that are not in the 2022 dashboard. So for example, I think Mexico is an example. Um, they reported results in 2021, the first year that we, we, we prepared the dashboard, uh, but they didn't 
they, they were not active in 2022. Um, but it means that you will always be able to go back and say, let me see all the countries that have ever reported into the G4G um, dashboard, okay? I want to stop here and just see, are there any questions in relation to the mentee component of the G4G dashboard? Just turn on your mic and speak. Okay. If there are no questions, I'm going to proceed. The second big part of the G4G dashboard is the mentor component, yeah? Remember, we can't have mentees without mentors. So it's very important that we know how many mentors are active and you know whether they're even participating in cohorts and getting um, to the end of, um, of cohorts. Um, so again, we have the number of countries, then we have the total number of mentors um, that supported uh, cohorts, then we have the year. You're now becoming familiar with the way the dashboard is presented. This will never change. It will always be consistent. The last period or the last date when the, uh, the dashboard was updated um, is, is what will be reflected across whichever page you're looking at. So here are our 10 countries again. Um, and this time, because we're looking at mentors, and by the way, you know you're looking at the mentors dashboard because the color has changed, it is black. The dashboard for the mentees is pink. So you're able to see the number of mentors that participated and you're able to see the ones that completed. So for us completed are those mentors that supported at least four sessions with four out of the six sessions of a, of a G4G um, cohort. So this is your, 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 your overall page for the mentors. But once again, you might want to see what is happening, let's say underneath um, uh, one of the countries. In this instance, I took the example of Kenya. So here we have Kenya. They had one, two, three, four, five, six cohorts that were active. And you can see the number of mentors that participated and the ones that completed. Sorry, it actually, one of the things we need to fix is that we should have participated on the left-hand side and then uh, completed on the right-hand side. But the ones in purple are the ones that participated and the ones that completed are the ones that are in pink. So you can see the cohorts and it would be very interesting to see, for example, these Swesters, uh, so cohort Swesters, which had full 100% participation of all its mentors, did it make a difference when it came to graduation? Same thing for Magnetic. And then the ones that had a bigger drop-off rate, say for example, Generation Changers, did the drop-off rate of mentors affect the performance um, of, um, of the cohorts. And you can see that in the feedback reports, you can see that in the graduation rates, because we know that when mentors start changing um, or when mentors are inconsistent in their participation in a cohort, it demotivates the mentees to come back. So the other dashboard that you can see, again, like I, remember I said, there are sub dashboards underneath the mentors is the historical information. You're able to say, Okay, in the past, for example, um, South Africa had um, here, it's just, it's, I think it's 190 something uh, mentors that had been trained. Um, and out of those 194 that had been trained, only 100 and maybe I'll say 130 were active. I was a country team leader at that point in time. And I'll tell you, this was one of the things that used to bother me. But I used to look at the data, I used to use the dashboard to say, do we have a problem? In truth, more than 50% of the mentors were active, which was a good thing. But we kept on asking ourselves as a G4G leadership team, what is it we are not doing to close this gap so that every woman that is trained to be a mentor comes and becomes a mentor? Um, and I'm, I'm sharing this type of thought process with you just so that you begin to see how to utilize the dashboard. And of course, you can compare it. Uganda is a superstar. They have so many uh, mentors that um, they train. Again, they seem to face the challenge like, like uh, South Africa. Why is everyone um, not, not, uh, not active? Okay. Um, then the other component that you will see that is unique um, for mentors are the number of mentors that are trained as of this quarter. So remember, to actively mentor for G4G, you have to be trained, officially trained as, um, as a mentor. So we keep track of that. You will notice that there are very few countries that are represented um, over here. You have um, 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 Lesotho, Uganda, South Africa, and I, sorry, I can't even see the last, 
it's Malaysia that are, that are reported that that are reflected. This is another pain point for ours. The training data is reported separately, and you're going to see that today. And it seems that countries are struggling more reporting on the training data vis-a-vis -vis the cohort data. For example, a country like Kenya, we know um, had trained um, uh, uh, people. I suspect um, the, the Latin American countries who then became active in 2022, 2023 also started training. So we are begging you, please, we need to, to, to have your training data also coming in um, so that we are able to reflect your information within the dashboard and you're able to see what the results are. So those are the subcomponents of the Menti, of, of the G4G dashboard that has two big parts, the mentee component and the mentor component. Now, what are the benefits of the G4G dashboard? Um, and I think it's important to point it out. I think we all kind of have an idea, but here's a summary. It gives you quick access to accurate and good quality data. Remember, it's good quality because you're going to have Oratile, who is going to look through your numbers and say, wait a moment, this data is not making sense. So you get a free quality check for yourself. Kinelu is the one who does it for the training data. She looks and she says, no, wait a moment, something is not right with this data, take a second look. It allows for you to do routine monitoring of country and cohort performance. So for instance, when I was a country team lead, this was my go-to. I would look at the dashboard to say, wait a moment, how are we doing as South Africa? When people, funders say to me, how are we doing? I would be able to answer because I'm able to see through the dashboard how well we are doing, the routine monitoring. It allows for easy reporting. I have given you an example here. This is an extract out of the annual report um, that we prepared for South Africa. And later on, I will post it in the chat group so that you can download it for yourself. We like to do that. When I was tasked to prepare the annual report, I just go to the dashboard, screenshots, screenshots, put them on PowerPoint slides, and voila, our report is done. And then all we do is we have a summary for each, um, for each cohort. Like um, at the bottom here, you see something about Asnath Mahapa. But you will notice that the data that is written in here about Asnaf Mahapa is speaking to the data that is um, at the top within the dashboard. Um, so it's easy to, to prepare these reports. It allows for decision making and focusing of management efforts. So um, for example, if you have a cohort that is running uh, two years, three years, it costs a certain amount of money to G4G, but we are seeing a graduation rate of 10% then we can say, no, wait a moment, this is not making sense. There's something that needs to be done at that cohort. We need to improve them. And if you know we fail to have anything happening over there, then we might need to say, okay, maybe it's not working in that particular cohort. So it allows for effective decision-making um, to happen. The dashboard is also very powerful. You can see how attractive it is. It is a very powerful tool for resource mobilization. So for those of you who work at institutions or you want to even introduce um, G4G to your workplace and things like that, take the dashboard. Um, it makes us look professional. It makes us look like we know what we are doing. Um, and people can see that G4G works when they can see the graduation rates. Um, and it allows for accountability to partners and to funders. In South Africa, it is now our standard practice. Every end of the year, we prepare this annual report whereby we say, this is what we were doing in 2022. You supported us. Look at how good the results were at Asnath Mahapa, at UJ, that type of thing. Um, which means that then the funders want to give us. And I will give you a very clear example. In South Africa, in, in, 20, in 2022, at the start of 2022, we got funding from, um, from Ituba. Um, I think it was 150,000. This year, we shared the information with them. They've upped their funding. I don't know whether it's because of the dashboard, but I, I believe they, they, they feel they're associated with a credible institution. And this year, we were able to mobilize 250,000 rands um, from them. So it's a very powerful tool um, in terms of resource mobilization. You can put it in proposals and things like that. I'm coming towards the end of my presentation. I think at this point in time, it's good to reflect on what do we need um, for at a country level and cohort level to be able to reflect our results into the G4G dashboard. So one, we need human champions for M&E that ensure that data is captured and that it is reported. The dashboard cannot be reported on without having good data sources. And Oratile and Karabu are going to help us understand how that comes to happen. 
The other thing you need are the tools to collect data. So registration forms, attendance forms, training registers, that information is already kind of put together for you by G4G because we shared with you, for instance, the templates for registration in the March training. Attendance registers, Oratile also shared with you, you know, uh, what the register looks like. Today, you're going to be exposed to how the training register looks like and how um, uh, Karabu is able to use it. The other thing you need is equipment. So unfortunately to use the G4G dashboard as well as to assemble the data for the G4G dashboard, it's very complicated to do it on a phone. I, I actually don't know whether it's possible to do it on a phone. So you would need a laptop and you would need basic skills in Excel um, for you to be able to understand, you know, when you start seeing error messages and things like that. Again, we're always available to help and support you. But I think the most important thing is the will, the intention to say, I want to um, report into the G4G dashboard, which means you become intentional. And then you're able to say, as my cohort graduates, for example, Tilly, who is on this call, um, and Rinky, as the THMC uh, cohort graduates, you must want to say, I want those THMC results reflected within the G4G dashboard, and I want to see it when we click on um, South Africa. So that's my conclusion in terms of what um, the dashboard is what its benefits are. I've given you an overview. We still have a practical whereby I'm actually going to invite someone um, who is going to walk us through um, the dashboard. But um, for me, my final message is that if we, if we don't work collaboratively, the dashboard will fail. It is only as good as the efforts of all the countries and all the cohorts. So I leave you with the African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, you go alone, right? Like South Africa, if we had said, ah, we're going to have really good presentation of our results, we're going to see how to do it, you know, in a professional manner, we will do it on our own. Yeah, we could have done that. But because we want to go far, we go with other people. So if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, if you want to achieve something and have impact, you go together. So for us, the appeal is that we want to continue investing in the dashboard, but we cannot do this without you. And we welcome you um, to join us in this journey, reporting for the G4G dashboard and contributing to it and telling us how to make it better. Okay, thank you very much. I will now open it up for questions. Is there anyone who has any clarifications before we go into the tools? Welcome, welcome to Girls for Girls and our Immediately, any quick questions? Any questions? No, it seems that you're on yes, two different yes, calls. Yes, Please yes. mute yourself. Karabu and Oratile, help me manage um, the logistics. Thanks. Okay, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the the, the chat box. Are we counting to reach uh, one million girls and women in 2025? Are we counting for those who graduated only or those who ever graduated? Jennifer, you asked this question, right? Did you, did you get your answer? Jennifer? I see we are two Jennifers here. Can you there, there's a Jennifer, there's a, Okay, there's a Jennifer who put a question in the in the chat box asking about the 1 million target. So I'm just pointing out, I was asking whether she had seen the answer. So here is the G4G dashboard. And I think I pointed it out. Here's the global target for the 1 million mentees. And this is where our progress is. We so far are only at 8,090. We chose to count girls that have graduated, not the ones that have um, participated. Do I answer that question? Is that okay? Okay. Uh, okay. Yes. Fantastic. Oratili had actually already answered that. Um, and then Jeanette is asking, may I please have the registration form? Uh, I missed the, the, the first training. So um, uh, Jeanette, we actually posted that on the WhatsApp link for the mentors. We will post it later on today. Um, but remember that there, there are two registration forms, Jeanette. I don't know which one you're talking about. Is it the registration form for mentees or the registration form for mentors? 
Um, hi, Rita. Okay, you've actually answered my question. Mm -hmm. It's I thought it would be something different. So it would be, it would have, I've got those then. If it's the same ones that we've been using, then I'm sorted. Thank you. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay. Okay, um, any other questions um, from anyone? Any comments? We're good? May I actually just uh, ask a question? I love the, the data on the dashboard, the mentees and the mentors data. And you mentioned that if we are wanting to, I have someone in mind that has offered, I mentioned a little bit of what we do. They would like to sponsor one of our trainings. Um, do you share the mentor information and the mentees together? Is there a template that one can use to maybe ask for funding for one of the projects that, um, that, that, that we are doing? Okay, yeah. so what, what I'll do, um, these are very good questions and I think very practical. We are not too many people, so maybe we'll be able to drill down further. Um, when I come back for my session where I'm showing you the dashboard, I'm going to pull up the presentation um, to see to share with you how we actually you know cut and paste in there. I will also put in in the in the chat box if it's an informal request, like for example, when I talk to people and I say, and then they say, oh, we're interested. Just tell us a little bit more. Um, you can share with them the annual report. That one I'm also going to post in the WhatsApp uh, chat group so that you can begin to see how we utilize um, the information. But yes, at G4G South Africa, we've got templates, very, various templates um, for, 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 for proposals where we say who G4G is, um, how many people we have been able to reach. And that's the example I will also try and share with you. Okay, and I don't know if this is related to this training, Rita. I'm just going to put the question out there anyway. Uh, I've already informally mentioned. So as a coach for me personally, uh, yes. as a business coach and a transformational coach, I am interested in offering my coaching services, mm. including the G4G mentoring um, sessions, the eight module, uh, the six modules. Six modules. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you allow that? Do I still get support? I would like to individually package that I offer my coaching, but I say with my coaching, I would love to also do the mentoring um, modules with the groups that I have. So I don't know if that's something that's been done already. Encouraged. <laughs> Because remember, <laughs> we're trying to reach the 1 million girls. So yes. anyone who comes to us and says we can put 15 mentees into that pot. And remember, our mentees go up to 30 years old, right? Yes. Um, if you say in my coaching intervention, I'm specializing in this area, but I want to top up with G4G. No problem. You sign Perfect. the contract with G4G yes. and we will just understand that with uh, Jeanette Inc, um, she is going to be coaching 15 girls. It's going to happen in this period. And that's how many mentees she expects to come on board. And all we say to you is here are the materials. But yes, you need to report back to us so that we're able to see your progress. It also means, Jeanette, that you're able to tap into the pool of mentors in G4G. So you can approach me and say, Rita, the people I'm talking to are consultants in the public health space, which is your area. Would you mind coming and joining with me when I do the G4G, when I top up on the G4G uh, mentoring thing? So it's it's brilliant. It's, it's, yes. like, it's flexible and it's fantastic. And I think we welcome that. That's innovative mm -hmm. thinking, Jeanette. Yes. Because our traditional is, let's go to a school, let's go to a university, you know, but you're thinking, how do I weave it into my business? So kudos to you for that. Yeah, so it is, it is a group of more uh, mature ladies. So I love the structure of the G4G, G4G and it's given me a very practical way of also approaching my coaching. So that exactly. I'm really looking forward um, to it, uh, yes. to incorporating the two together. Exactly. I, I mean, just to share, and then we'll close the conversation and pass it on to Oratile. But when, when we were proposing, there was a, a health intervention, HIV prevention intervention we were proposing for. We didn't win. But one of the innovations we were using is that this organization we're partnering with, in the mornings, they were going to be doing the clinical intervention. So for example, for HIV prevention, 
They would be talking about condom use. They would be talking about uh, PrEP use, pre-exposure prophylaxis, everything you can do as a young woman to keep yourself HIV negative. Then in the after, so they were going to present and say, here are all your options. This is where you can get the condoms. This is how you can access PrEP, that type of thing. Then in the afternoon, we would, for instance, mirror that, that, that intervention with negotiating because when you want to use a condom, it's not you alone that's gonna use a condom, right? You have to negotiate with your sexual partner. So we were then plugging on G for G, how to effectively negotiate. So we actually spent a lot of time innovating for that public health intervention. Um, so for everything they would say in the morning, we would, we would find um, how is it relevant within uh, G for G. So those are the types of innovations I think that will make us you know, even more effective because now it's not just mentoring to make sure girls are empowered to lead, but you're also now giving girls a health intervention. You can switch this to the financial side of things. Um, when you want to go and get, you can do a financial going to get a loan. Um, how do you go and negotiate for, for, for the loan? Alternatively, um, how do you communicate and sell your business idea effectively so that that bank manager wants to be the only one financing you, he doesn't want any other bank. So there are many ways we can think about G4G. Um, and indeed, you know, to, to start creating these innovative products, it is going to be important that we can demonstrate that the G4G program works. How do we demonstrate the G4G program works? By presenting our data and the evidence for it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good conversation. We've gone off track, but I think hopefully we find it helpful. And I'm happy to work with you, Jeanette, on all of this. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. So I'm going to hand it over to Oratile, who is now going to talk about how to get data into the first, the, in, into the, the, the dashboard. So how do we report on mentees and how do we report on mentors? Over to you, Oratile, thank you. Thank you, Ma. Um, hi, everybody. I am Oratile. <laughs> Um, okay, please allow me to share my screen. Okay, so I'm just gonna walk you through how to report on the cohort data. Like Mamrita has explained, once you're done with your cohort, then what do you do with the data? Um, this is where we go about this is where we actually get to get our information onto the dashboard so we normally send out um the links every second week of the month as a reminder to the m e people to send you um information on cohorts that have graduated now um i would send a link to an email or via whatsapp then all of my data will then get into my, like the core data will get into a spreadsheet, which will all be in a Google Docs. So you'd have cohort one, two, three from various different people who have actually filled out the form and they go into one, one Google Docs. And then this is where I do my quality check, where I check the information um, I will show you how to go about it at a later stage. Um, <clears throat> also, this is where I review and then we send back any information that has any discrepancy. Once that has done, I'll move the clean data, which is the data that has no errors or no discrepancies onto a clean sheet where they will then be extracted to, will be generated to the dashboard that you see at the bottom there. Is everybody okay? Okay. Sorry. Yes, I am getting it. I am following, I am getting it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jine. I will do a practical a bit later on, so don't worry about all the large information. All right. Thank you. It's a pleasure. So you would have our common, the common challenges and mistakes that we find when processing the information. So I'll just go through it. Um, so please pardon me if I move around a bit because I'll have to show you the errors 
as well the mistakes as well as the practicality of it all. Um, so the first and most common mistake that we find is the usage of um, numbers, so your NA instead of your zeros. And this tends to result in an error in the system because the database, if you look at it properly, it is predominantly numerical. So let me quickly move on to that. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, yeah. Okay. So if you look at the yellow, so the numbers highlighted in yellow, you will see we have the none, the not aware where we actually just need numbers. All right. So that would then make it difficult for us to process the data onto the dashboard. Okay. Sorry. Oh, what is happening? Okay, give me a moment. Who is that thing in the puppy key? Please give me a moment. Um. What's happening here? What are you uh, looking for, Oratile? Maybe I can help you. Uh, for my Shay, I want to paint to presentation mode. Wh which document are you looking for? Um, reporting cohort. So I need to go back to that slide. So I don't understand what you want. You want the you want the actual document. Yes, I'm trying to put it on presentation mode. You already are on presentation. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. But in okay. the meantime, I'm going to put the two documents that you're going to be uh, referencing. I'm loading them into the chat box so that people can pull them for themselves. Huh? The, the two okay. Is that okay? Um, so we also have... <clears throat> The information, the incorrect age dis, 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 uh, disaggregation, <laughs> excuse me, that's a tongue twister for me, um, that normally do not tally with the overall. And again, let me just show you what I mean. Oh. So if we look at the green part, um, we have row column I, which is the participated of 18. But if we add those, it will give us a sum of 23 instead of 18. So this is how we normally do due distance and then return back to the focal person to correct and verify the data. Uh, we have a selection of the wrong quarter. Now this becomes a challenge um, where we then, you'd find that somebody has reported for quarter four, but we're just collecting for quarter three. So we then go back to ask when is the correct quota. Um, so this part just tends to have your information displaced because of the quarter of submission. So, Again, I'll share an example. Please pardon, I keep moving so you can just see what I mean when I say there is, well, what the mistake actually is. So for my blue, if you look at the date of submission is on the 31st of March, but the individual is reporting for quarter four, which lies between the 1st of October and the 31st. Now this would then result in, well, like I've said, the displacement of your data. Uh, and then we have 
instances where we have short and ambiguous um, cohort performance. Now this becomes difficult for the second party to read and try to understand what the cohort activity, what happened during the cohort. So the result, um, the result activity will then be a bit hard to understand. Again, <laughs> we have that on, give me a moment. On the orange, the one highlighted in orange, where somebody just said no additional comments or details included in session report. Well, this becomes problematic when it's read by somebody from a different country, then they wouldn't know exactly what happened during the session report because they're probably not following the country's session reporting system. <coughs> So those are the common mistakes found within the form. Um, we also have the coordination system, coordination challenges, um, where you find that um, country leaders and m and &E people are not aware of the cohort activity happening in that country. Now this leads to a delay in generating the form, like Mamita had explained before, where there is the part where we have to show the updated version. Um, this is normally because of the second fourth where we have to get the data. So it, this part delays the actual reporting and the, the generation of the um, dashboard. And then we will have, I mean, people not submitting reports on time, that also results in the um delay in the generation of the dashboard and lastly <laughs> we have a lack of communication from countries when and if they change the m and &E person so this would normally result in um us sending information or links to the wrong individual now this could mean that some cohorts get lost or are not um, they are not reported, and uh, it would then send a delay in the generation of the dashboard. Now, when the information is misplaced or is not reported, that would automatically be a misrepresentation of of the country activity hap the cohort activity happening in the country. Um, I hope everybody is clear. And if anybody has further questions, my contact details are below. Mother? Does anybody have questions for me? Or comments? Hi, Oratine. Oh, sorry, I'll wait. No, go ahead, Jeanette, sorry. Okay, no, uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Just a quick one on my end. When I upload my data, is it automatically generated or? you guys would need to release it for me to view it? Is it an automated upload of the data that I input into the system? Okay, um, thank you, Jeanette. So it, when you upload it, it's automatically uploaded on my side and then I will check it. And then if there are errors, I would then review it back to you and say, hey, um, Firefly sent you their report. These are the discrepancies. I think back the spreadsheet as well for you to view what the discrepancies are. And then if it's okay, I do say, hey, I got your report. It looks okay. I will be moving it to the section where it gets generated to the dashboard. I don't know if I answered your question. Yes, you do. So I wanted to just gather, it gives me an opportunity to rectify so that the data is accurate. So that answers my question. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am, it's a pleasure. Um, anybody, a comment, question? Um, sorry, if I may just chip in. So Jeanette, this is what we were saying, that um, we, we know that we get good quality data because when you submit, it, it, yes, it goes automatically into a system, but it doesn't go automatically into the dashboard because of that quality checking measure. And okay. that's what 
Mm. And and in sometimes in the beginning, people used to get angry because Oratile would come back and say, but this is not adding up. But I think it's to come from a point of appreciation that there's a second eye that is looking. Mm. We all make mistakes. There's a yes. second eye that is looking to say, oh, wait a moment, this and that, when you add it up, it doesn't make sense. So that yeah. quality checking and that verification process ensures that what we see in the dashboard actually makes sense. I'll give you an example. It's very easy if we were just taking the data that was coming in because the dashboard adds up those subcells. You might find that 200 people registered, 200 mentees registered in South Africa, and then you find 405 participated. And mm -hmm. it's simply because someone did, did, did the wrong um, reporting. So that's why we look at it and we say, no, 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 wait a moment. Maybe you crossed your data or maybe there was a data transposition error and that type of thing. Okay, no, that's that's amazing. I've done some embarrassing things where the where the data has gone live without that second eye. So I love that it it is uploaded, but it doesn't go live immediately because if there is sometimes it's such small mistakes and it can be such an embarrassing thing. Yeah. So I think I appreciate that quality check before it goes live. Okay, perfect, and that's typical M&E, because in M&E, it's not just about collecting the data, but it's about quality checking the data and ensuring that what is ultimately reflected um, is appropriate. And then finally, of course, you close the loop by using the data. So very good questions, Jeanette, thank you. Back to Oratile. Okay, um, as I had explained, um, Madam, may you please put the registration and the register on the chat for me? So that everybody can see what I'm talking about. Okay, um, so if everybody can find they're in the chat box. Yes. Download okay. the two Excel documents. We're gonna have like an interactive session on how to fill out the the cohort report. So I'll just give you a minute or so. Okay. So I won't be seeing that information. So I would hope that somebody helps me go through it, if it's okay. Okay, so now I have displayed to you the form that you would see once you once a cohort is completed. And this is what we keep referring to as the cohort reports that essentially gets gives us data for the dashboard. Um, if we're ready to go, I'll be starting. Go ahead, Oratile. And I think maybe we'll even try and, and submit it. And then this is a 2023 form, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, then we'll be able to show them how it actually goes live and then we'll just delete it and ignore it. We'll we'll just so you can call this demo cohort or something like that. Huh? Okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, this would be your personal information, the country you're reporting from. I'll just go with this one. Huh? Um cohort name, that's the cohort you're reporting for. So this is done at the end of session six of the cohort. The year twenty twenty three. This part. Um. So the period is when we say, let's say. Debbie cohort ended um, March, February, March, I mean, February 27. So it would fall on um, Q1. So our last our session six was on the 27th of February. It would then fall under Q1. Go to the next part. So this Sorry, is where um, just, just to chip in on the quarter. Um, it's when the last session was held because sometimes we get questions around, oh, but our graduation has not happened. As long as the sixth session has been held, you can report. I just wanted to flag that. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. 
Okay, so this is where the numbers come into play. Um, if you look at it, we're gonna require the number of registered mentors. Now, this is found on the demico hot registration hot registration baseline registration. Yes. So, if somebody could kindly look at the numbers for me. So, these are the total number of ladies who have said, "Hey." I'm interested in joining Demi Cohort for 2023. What's your question? The number of registered mentees on the spreadsheet that was shared. Okay. Anybody? I'd like this to be as interactive as possible so that you actually do understand once you have to fill it out. We'll just give not maybe you drop maybe you drop your screen and we allow someone else to show so that they can show us how they're counting. Has anyone been able to download? It's it's document example two, right? Yes, ma'am, it is. So I've dropped down my screen. I've got 15. Sorry, how are we answering? <laughs> it's do you want here. to show do you want to share your screen and see how you got the 15? Um, so is this on the second one? The second yes. example. Yes, okay. Um, this is example the attendance register are we there yeah the second one no, g for no. g. Uh, g for g registration baseline okay no i don't have that one uploaded i've got the first one let me see if i can quickly okay. let me just see my screen get it. No, let, let's really try and get is is no has no one else downloaded it's in the so chat. I've got, I've got so two. So it's I've 19. So, so uh, I've got uh, 19. Would you like uh, to, would you be able to share your screen, Matilda? Uh, uh, maybe what I can share, then I can explain. Because my okay. phone, I can't. Oh, you on your share. phone. OK, yes, that might be the challenge. OK, let me do that for you. Give me. There it is, Tilly, can you see it? Yes, ma'am. So, okay. uh, fr um, so from the um, Excel sheet, you can see the number of uh, people by highlighting, because the first one is mostly um, the name, uh, emails and stuff. I highlighted from the second all the way to the last number, and I got um, the amount of um, the registered mentees. So that gave me 19 because um, the first one has that whole pink bold example of mentees. So I started from the, the actually started from oh it's 18. Sorry, it's 18. Okay, thank you, Tilly. So I you get from, from the third, um, um, what do you call it? The, the third number block, all the way down. I highlighted, and it gets it gives me the number at the end. There we go. That's your count. Yes, ma'am. Right. Thank you. So that is the people who just raised their hands up. Okay, now we're gonna get into the participation. Now our participation patient definition is a person who has attended at least one session. Let's say the person came for session one and never showed up again. We count that person because they did attend at least a session. Now, this is normally found in your attendance register. Um, I did explain attendance register in the March thingy, but also I will show it again so that everybody has a clear idea of what we are talking about. Uh, can I get a volunteer to help? I'll just put up the 
attendance register. So this is our attendance register for demic cohort. So we are looking for the total number of ladies who have participated with demic cohort. Can anybody tell me what the number is? It's 12. 12. <laughs> 12. Okay. So our number would be 12. So that's the number of participants. Um, now it's Oratile, again, for purposes of clarity, can you go back to the spreadsheet and show where the 12 came from? I think that's what's important. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, ma'am. So you check. The first individual, you drag it down and highlight the with um, Google Excel, it just counts it for you. There's your 12 participants. So from participant one, from Diniko Baloi right until Avuyile. Okay, I can't pronounce the setting. I'm sorry. Spring. Yeah, that's your 12 in between the yeah. and then it's yes Tilly no I was saying yes ma'am it makes sense okay now we're gonna break uh, down sorry Mildred has her hand up yes Mildred Oh, I think I also wanted to, you to say that it's important for them to note that why is it not saying 15 but 12? Because the other three didn't meet the minimum session to attend that are required. Clarify that part. All right. So let me just explain the difference. So the 15, although he said they wanted to attend or attempt to attend at least a session, right? that wanted to join Demi cohort. But these ones are the ones that actually showed up for one, at least one session. So the registered, they would like to attend. The participated at least attended, showed up for at least one session. Is that clear for everybody? Oratile, I think it's also important you just explain the different data sources. Registration comes up from the registration form. Participation is from the attendance register that kicks in only when the cohorts start. So just show example, the, the yes, so that one, yes. So this is every country has a baseline and registration form. We, we, we release that on our WhatsApp media and people will sign up for all the cohorts that are on offer, Demi cohort, ABC cohort, UJ cohort, whatever it is. But here you then extract specifically for Demi cohort when you're about to start your cohort. So this one is the registration data that feeds into, go to the form Oratile, please. Which form? The one we are completing, the form we okay. are completing. This one. I'm, I'm linking it to the question. So when we ask the number of mentees that have registered or signed up for a cohort, you go to the registration form which every country should have. That's why we started off by saying Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Zambia, Botswana, every country should have that master list of sign up. If you don't have it, you will not be able to report on that first variable within the dashboard that says number registered. Yeah. And then the, the second question, the participation, that one, how many mentees have participated? Think about it. It will come from your attendance register. So from your attendance register, you will have every time a girl comes and participates in a cohort, of course they sign up, they indicate their email address. So that list might, may keep growing. Session one, you might only have 10 girls. People go back and say, oh, what great, you know, sessions G4G is holding. So session two, you end up with 14, um, or maybe by session three, you then have 15. And you can see that as the sessions go, columns G, H, 
all the way to L, you will start, you will, you will be able to see that this person, Tinyeko Baloy, came for session one, she missed session two. Actually, this person never came back again. And then you can see uh, Tsepiso Tau came for all the sessions. So it builds up as you go. So this attendance register is what you need to be able to count people participated. So two different documents that are set up at two different times. Because the point I think that has been made relates to the third question. So back to you, Oratile. Thank you, Ma. <laughs> yes. So I spoke about the miscalculation in the disaggregation of information. So from 3.2 to 3.2.1 to 3.2.2, this is where we do our disintegration. Um, so on the registration, on the attendance register, can I get the number of girls who have participated between the ages of 15 and 90? You can I'm share your screen or a Sorry. So the age groups there. Sorry, if you can just increase the size because I think it's tough for people to read. Okay, let me increase it. And then what is the question again? The number of mentees that participated between the ages of 15 to 19. So we are essentially doing the disaggregation of the ages. It's three. Thank uh, you. So that would be it. three. And then 20 to 24. Six. Yeah. I heard somebody say six. Six. I've got six. So that is your six day. So from 20 to 24, we have six mentees who participated. Um, moving on to the ages 25 to 29. I got three. Yes, ma'am. So we have a few right there if we do our count. Thank you very much. And then for the mentees above the age of 30. Zero. Zero. Thank you. So here, you write a zero. Um, remember the, the mistake I showed you where we get the nine and the NAs? We teach that we just use a numerical zero because everything is numerical based. And because of that star there, it says entry is required. So for everywhere you see a little star, just know that you have to fill out the the question, so it would then be a zero. Ratile. Yes, ma'am. Um, if I would, if I was to put an an A there, would it be applicable? No, it we get a system error because our form does not read words. Instead, it works with numerical. Got it. Thank you, darling. And then we have the number of mentees with disabilities. Um, do I have another question? Yeah. Okay, so this one, this question, we have the mentees with disabilities. Now, correct me if I'm right, it is a standard question for all G4G registration forms. Exactly. If that question is standard. It's included in the standard template for registration. So as the girls sign up, they will explain what their disability is if they have one. Um, it might be sight, it might be hearing, whatever it is. So we will, we, we will know 
because it should be reflected within the registry, the baseline registration form. Thank you. Thank you. So like Mom, you explained, we have the registration baseline form. So that's where you would get your um, information on the disability, right? Is it on the baseline database, which is column F, row F. Okay, column A. So this is where we actually get to know if our um, mentees have, I'm just gonna make it a bit smaller so that everybody can see everybody. So let me just do this. Right there. So ideally you would have this column as well on your attendance register, but because we don't have it, you just come get it here. Right? Yes, ma'am. And so far, there is nobody with a disability. So for that question, it would be a zero. We good so far? Yes. And Now we come to the graduated. Graduated is considered a person who has attended four or more sessions. So if a person attended one session, the person has not graduated. Or a person has attended three sessions, the person has not graduated. This part, we also get it in our um, attendance register template. So, now we're going to look for the total number of mentees that have graduated, which is found here. Let me move this side. Can I get the total number of mentees that have graduated? Anybody? I got nine. Can you explain how you got to the nine? Okay, so I checked um, if they, how many sessions did they attend? So uh, those who attended from uh, four sessions to six are those who are graduating. And those who attended less than four sessions are not graduating. Yes, ma'am. And also the color coordination. Thank you. So like we can do it either way, look at the color coordination. Or like Rinki did, look at the number of attendance of these ladies have done. So we have nine for number of graduated. We do the segregated segregation again. That's what is a ten twister. So we look at the ages between thirteen and nineteen. Let me just hide this for you so that you can see it and hide it. Mm. Okay. So here is our age group. So you're looking for mentees that have graduated between 13 to 19. Two. Thank you. And then, so that's our two. Um, 20 to 24. Okay, let's see. Mm 
Anybody? Mm, I got five. Yes, ma'am. It is a five. Let me show you. So the count is six, right there, of the ages 25 to 24. But then there's a red there, which means it's the six nine is the one. And then for 25 to 29, Number of graduated mentees. Oh, sorry. We have two, ma'am. Thank you, Tilly. So it's two. And then for 30, the the And then again, graduated mentees, because we don't have a mentee with a disability, it would be there, zero. We could put the numbers part. Okay. Yes, we're good with the numbers part. So this is the comment section. Um, this is the part where we actually need an explanation of the cohort activity. What happened? Why did you guys get good mark, good rates, um, graduation rates? You know, so this would be something like mentees were submitted, were attending, and some had. Uh, that is in the future. So something along those lines. So it explains why others dropped off and then why we had the high percentage, the graduation rate, right? And then we move. Now this is the mentor data section where we get how many mentors participate, how many mentors just um, attend full sessions. Okay, I do not have the mentors session, so we'll just make it up as we move. But that was also found in the attendance register. So you'd have the mentees attendance register and the mentors attendance register. I don't have the mentees. Oh yeah, I don't, okay. Um, so let's just say for hypothetically, we had five mentors participate. Five mentors, okay. So we'd have a participation is five. We also use the same system where we get the number of the attendance register, how many they, how many sessions a mentor attended. So this session, this part would be a mentor who has attended at least four or more sessions. So let's just say three attended four more sessions. And then the remainder, which is two, just came for two sessions. So that would be it. And then as well here, we write comments. Um, Mentor and mentees were well committed and session. Um, of course, when you fill it out, it would be more detailed. And then we submit the document. So this would be on your side, it's done. We are done with that. Uh Ma, do I pull up the 2023? I've got it up. Um, so if you drop, I can show it. All right. Thank you, Mama. Right. And there it is. Okay. So this is what we mean when we say it automatically comes to our side. This is the way we do the 
due diligence of checking if the numbers tally up or not, and checking if there are any other discrepancies. Ora Chile? Yes, ma'am. Sorry, uh -huh. what do you want me to do? Okay. Um, just go to the side towards the thingy. Where is it? The, yes, the participation. Please drag from J to J to M. Just for demi cohort, mama. Okay, so now if you look here, column J to M, tally gives us a sum of 12, which is the sum of our participated mentees right at I-12, I-20. So that's how we do due diligence and we'll do that for the rest of the row before we move it to a sheet where we can actually get the verified data generated onto the dashboard. Thank you, Mama. <laughs> so that would be the graduation where we get the sum. If you look at the number of graduated, we have the nine right there. Okay. And then please go to the mentor side of things. So we have five mentors that participate. If we do the tally, it's five. So this is how the verification process is done, which will move it to the clean version of the data source, which is the clean sheets. And then this is now where Demi will be showing on the dashboard. So this is the when the dashboard, dashboard is updated, because oh. even that is a separate step, right? Oh, yes. When, yeah. eventually, when the dashboard is updated, Demi cohort will definitely appear on the 2023 dashboard. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, everybody. Do we have questions or comments? Not much. Jeanette, just um, appreciating. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mama, over to you. I think I am done. OK. OK, um, so do, uh, let's do a little bit of democracy. Um, it's been a while. It's, I think, one hour, 40 minutes or one and a half hours since we've been together. Do we take a break now or uh, do we keep going and then we take a break in about 10 minutes time? Um, any input? Show of hands, emojis, we can keep going. Can we keep going? Me, better. OK, okay. that's fine. Yes, fine. yes. Okay, so, um, okay, great. I'm seeing a show of hands. Okay, fantastic. So um, thank you very much, Oratile. So Oratile, if you remember the, the dashboards, we, we talked, what you've done is the bulk of the work. So you're able to see, you know, the mentees, the activities around cohorts, you're able to see the mentors and the activities around cohorts. So now there's a very special reporting format for the mentors that have been trained. And that one is captured separately. So I'm going to show you very briefly what the process is. It's very similar to the cohort reporting. And then I will show you the form. And then Karabo and I are going to work together to show you how to, to populate. So here we go. Okay, I need to close that. Close that, okay. 
here we go. Um, so very much, very much like what Karabu um, showed you earlier on, um, we send out a link. Now, the difference between the cohort report and the training report is that the cohort report can be submitted at any time. A country with a very good practice that does that is Uganda. The moment a cohort ends, they have to report. Same here in South Africa. The moment a cohort ends, you have to report for the cohort. But for the, the training data, because the mentors training only happens once a month, we remember it only happens on the last Saturday of every month. For example, today there's a training that's happening. We decided we would either have to collect it monthly or quarterly. And we figured that we would go with quarterly so that we are not disturbing people every month. So what do we do? We send out, this is now Kinelwe. I'm doing this on behalf of Kinelwe. She sends out the reporting link. She does it via email or via WhatsApp. Those of you who are active on Global Fora, you will realize that she has just, she sent out uh, the request for quarter one of 2023. Now, the other difference with the training data is that it's countries that submit, not cohorts. Stop and think about it. The training is driven by a country. So a person, when you sign up to train, you're going to be coming from country, South Africa, or country Malawi, or country Tanzania. Um, so the report, has to be consolidated from a country perspective. They submit the data, similar to the Google worksheet that you have just seen me displaying, the data automatically enters. Then there will be that check, just like what we have done under the cohort data, whereby we look at the numbers, does it make sense? And then the dashboard is updated um, and um, it, is, it is issued. Um, so that is the process. Very simple, very similar um, to what we have been we, we, to what we have just gone through for the cohort uh, data. So I'm not going to go through as in as much detail. But I wanted you to see what actually happens. So remember, I said Kinelwe will send to every country. She has a list of who the contact people are for the the the, the mentors training data. So she will send it via an email and it will come up this way. Uh, you can all see my inbox. I need someone oh, to yes. talk to me. <laughs> Thank you very yes. much. Okay, so you click on it. It's the usual, very simple. It takes you straight um, to the worksheet. Um, so um, here I had already started playing around with it. Um, here is the email address. Um, the name of the person that prepared uh, the report, the country I am reporting from, um, and then the year. So let's imagine we are now reporting for activities that happened earlier in the first quarter of this year. Um, so it's 2023. We used to put an option of years, but then people would were picking the wrong year. So now we know that we only run um, the link for a specific year. I think it has helped ease that problem. And then the quarter. So similar to the caution that we made in the previous session, it is we are reporting data for um, the months that happened within the quarter. So you can imagine uh, when Karabo was preparing for South Africa, um, the quarter one results, she could only prepare it after the March training had happened. So she will be preparing results for January, February, and March. It is impossible at this point in time to be reporting quarter three data for 2023. We are not yet there. It also is impossible for you to be reporting for quarter two because we still have to, to train for the month of um, May. We still have to train for the month of June. So right now we know we can only do it for the month of, uh, sorry, for the first quarter. Okay. So once that has been populated, um, you now come to where we actually capture the data. So in this session, I'm going to be working with uh, Karabo. Um, so I will introduce the question to you and then I'm going to hand it over to Karabo. She will share her screen. So in this section, there are really only three questions and we, 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 we know it's, it, this, this is the area that requires a lot of discipline. It's only three questions, but the training data needs to be well kept. And we understand why a lot of countries are struggling to report on this. It's because they're not growing the database of, uh, of mentors that have been trained. If you don't have a system in place, 
it will be impossible for you to report, especially on the total number of mentors, and you're going to see why. So the first question to answer, and it's pretty simple, how many new mentors have been formally trained in this quarter? Let me emphasize what new mentors means. It means a mentor who has never ever been part of a cohort for G4G. For example, if I train in the February 2023 training, I would not be counted because I'm not new. I have been part of G4G South Africa since 2019. But let's imagine we have a new joinee Let's take Jennifer, if Jennifer was joining the South African cohort, she had never ever mentored before, it's the first time she's going for the training, she would be captured. So let's try and answer the number of new mentors that have been formally trained this quarter. This time I'm now going to hand it over to Karabu, who is the person that is responsible in South Africa for reporting. So as Karabu gets her worksheet open, um, it is important, I think, to take note that every country should be thinking about who is it that is responsible for reporting on training, on the training data from the country. Karab, I'm waiting for you to put up your worksheet. Thank you. Um, can you see my screen, ladies? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Um, Wait, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> now we can, but it's I, very small. Mm. Okay. Okay, so ladies, um, before you fill in uh, the form that Mambita was showing you, what you have to do is you have to prepare a document with information containing your country data. So what I did for South Africa, I... Um, abstracted data from um, the mentors training registration list that we get from the, the WhatsApp group chat, something like this. This is the, the list that you will see. And then I compared it to the, um, the participants list that we get after the mentors training. So this is the participants list, right? So now with um, answering um, the question that says, So with answering the question that says, um, how many, okay, can I, can I quickly fill in this and then we'll take it to the question. And please make sure that when you answer here, you put uh, correct details information so that when there's a mistake, you know who to go back to because of this is also your responsibility or you'll be able, you'll be accountable for this. Okay. So remember we reporting for quarter one results for January, uh, January's training, February's training and March training, right? So you're gonna click your next. Right. So in order for you to have to, to answer the first question, which is number of new mentors, like Mamrita has explained that this is uh, new mentors who have no relationship with G4G or who have never attended uh, G4G, you're going to go back to the spreadsheet, which is the final spreadsheet you'll get after comparing um, the mentors, which you'll get after comparing the mentors um, registration list with the participant list, right? So now on, on that form that I showed you, the first one, the mentors registration list, there's a um, question that says, So there's a question that that uh, will say, what is your current relationship with G4G? So this question is the one that will help you to know who's new and who's old. 
So now what I did is that I decoded it to, to this column, the age column, as you can see here, where I decoded to saying new and old. So this is where I'll be able to know my numbers of new and old. So now um, for me to know also um, how many new mentors for January, what I did is that I created tabs, as you can see below, there's January, there's February, and there's March. So for January, we had um, we had new 11 mentor, uh, mentees, and then for oh, mentors, sorry, mentors. And then for February, we also had seven. And then for March, we also had seven, as you can see down there, right? So you're gonna add the, the new number, the total of new mentors for January, for February, and for March, which is it's 11 plus seven plus seven, which is the total of 25. So you're gonna go back to your form and fill in 25, All right? Okay, are we clear on that? Is everyone okay with it? Okay. Yes. So, okay, so now we proceed um, with the second question. The second question wants to know, what is the total number of mentors that are trained in your country? So total means the new and the old mentors. And they want this information as of the end of this quarter. When answering this question, you have to count mentors trained since the start of G4G in your country. For example, in South Africa, we started in April, 2019. So this means it's a count all the way from April, 2019 up until March, uh, 31 March, 2023, okay? We are also counting people, not attendances. And it's very important you understand this. You can imagine a person like I, Rita, have been in training since April, 2019. I have trained other people, I've attended for refresher purposes, I've attended sometimes to motivate my own South African mentors to attend. So I've probably attended about six or seven different uh, trainings. So if you were to count the number of my attendances at the training, you would be getting false data. You would be saying seven mentors trained. So what we insist is that you count Rita. The attendance information is separate. Here, for this answer, the total number of mentors trained in your country, you're going to add people. So over to Karabu to share with you how we do it in South Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Mamrita. So ladies, um, for you to, to, to know um, how many mentors have been trained since the beginning of G4G in your country. So for South Africa, we had uh, created a document or rather a spreadsheet that looks like this, as you can see. So um, for you to get that information, you we, we abstracted the information from the participant list and then we captured it on this document. So of course you'll have to name it so that you know um, which document it's saved under, right? So what Mamrita was saying when uh, she said you need to capture only um, I mean, a person once, not the attendance, attendances. Let's, for, for example, let's take um, Asnath. Asnath has been captured once, as you can see, and then we added uh, the, the month and year of, a month and a year where she, she participated or trained uh, or took part in the mentors training, right? So now for you to, to know, um, to get the total of how many trained mentors you have since the beginning of G4G in your country, I'm just gonna simply highlight from AD Gale going, um, I'm just gonna drag it down until the last person, which is um, the last month of the training, which was March for quarter one, right? So as you can see, I'm scrolling. Okay, the last person is Mpokwaiti. So now, as you can see, there's um, a count down there. What's good about Excel, it's, autom it's gonna automatically um, give you the correct um, answers that you need. So as you can see, it says count, so which is 265. So you're gonna go back to your form and then you're gonna add 200 and 
65 mentors trained since the beginning of um, uh, G4G in your country, right? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Karabu. So now we know how many new mentors there were. We know how many, the total number of mentors trained are in the country. Sometimes we also want to know, no, no, sorry, not sometimes. What the third thing we want to know is the total number of people that were trained in this quarter. So sometimes you might have very few new joiners, um, but you still have mentors that are coming back for refreshers and things like that. So that still provides information, for example, to the country leadership, they're asking, are our people getting ready to mentor at cohorts and things like that. So we still want to know what's the level of activity. So the third um, question one needs to answer is the total number of people that are trained in this quarter. So regardless of whether they are old or whether they are new, but we want to know how many trained in quarter one, 2023. Over to you, Karabu. Thank you. So for you to know the total number of trained mentors in this quarter, you're gonna go back to um, uh, this uh, spreadsheet, the one that you have compiled. So now, because uh, we know um, how many new and how many old by having, uh, having it down here. So now you're gonna, see I've, I've added seven plus four, which is 11, right? So this is for January. And then for February, it's seven because it didn't have um, any old mentors. And then for March, it's uh, seven plus four, which is 11, right? So now we're gonna add the total um, numbers for January, February, and March. So when you add them together, it's gonna be 13 plus seven plus 11, which is, uh, 31 mentors that have been trained in quarter one, 2023. So you're gonna go back to your form and then include it there. So you're gonna say 31 mentors. You remember, no, no, no words, no words, it's just numbers. So you're just gonna write 31, right? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Karabo. So Karabo has gone through the pain of having her data, you know, like corrected where someone says, no, don't put uh, T-H-I-R-T-Y-O-N-E. Uh, what we just want are those numbers, um, 31. Um, so that's where the data comes from. But remember, it is also important for us to try and put this information into perspective. Um, when we report numbers, it's not just about getting the data out there. We also want to understand this, this 25, is it, is it a good performance? Um, and if it's a good performance, why do we think we had this performance? This is to allow the countries to reflect on why we are doing well. I won't lie to you, there have been years where in South Africa, we have gone like two months and we have had one mentor trained and the second month, zero mentors trained. It makes us wonder. And then we ask ourselves, what do we need to do to get our mentors being trained? So over to you, Karabo. Why do you have this performance and what type of performance do you think this is? Thank you. Thank you. Um, so um, let me just paste it out there because I've already. So now this is um, a good team performance for our first quarter for 2023. There are two main reasons that explain the 25 new mentors that were trained which is number one, we started our mentor recruitment drive for 2023 early but internally on WhatsApp, as well as posting in all our social media accounts, which attracted more ladies to sign up, right? And then number two is we hosted a series of financial webinars, which attracted both mentors as well as young ladies to be interested in mentoring under TPG. So ladies, you need to make sure that when you uh, respond to this uh, section, you need to be detailed and make sure that um, we know why you have 25 mentors. What did you exactly do to get those 25 new mentors? All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Karabo. I, I smile because um, Karabo has only reported once, but um, she's really gotten the knack of it. And I think one of the reasons we said, let Karabo be the one to present is because if, if she's, she's new to the system, but she has been able to uh, present it. And you can just see it's a bit of investment in terms of time and understanding what needs to be done and it can be done. So to be clear, the reporting for the training data is not done by cohort leaders or the majority of us. It is done by one person 
in a country. So all it requires is every country to appoint a person who will be responsible for reporting on the training data. Like here, it is Karabu. She knows her job. She knows before the trainings happen, she collects the number of mentee, mentors that prospective mentors that have signed up. She, when the training is over, she collects that information and she's diligent. She collects that information and she says, okay, give me that Zoom link. I want to see who from South Africa actually participated. She then consolidates it. She analyzes it to see who is new, who is old. And Karabu, how often do you do this? Every month, every quarter, when do you do this? So um, you do this every, every month. So after that mentor's training, you make sure that you go back to your spreadsheet, you include the details or you capture the details so that you do not forget when it's time to report. Because I know when it's time to report, almost everyone makes a mistake because you're gonna miss a certain number of people or, or a, a mentor, you know? So make sure that every, after training, for January, after the training, you, uh, you capture, for February, you capture for March, you capture so that when it's time to report for your quarterly, then you need to make sure that everything is there. Yeah, yeah. every year. Right. Yeah, and let me ask you just, how, how long does it take you to complete the training, the training report? Like to organize your data and then to complete and populate the training report? Just a realistic estimate? Is this like two days worth? Is it two hours? What is it? So um, it only takes like an hour depending on how fast you are and mm -hmm. for also how 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 often do you do this so it take, it takes normally an hour to 30 minutes depending yeah okay okay so it's something one can plan for yeah yeah yes. all righty thank you very much karabu flowers for karabu we have not been giving flowers uh, and and uh, <laughs> rain i know some people do showers and things like that any questions for this segment um from from the participants None. Okay, so we are all good. Um, we're about to go into the demonstration of the dashboard. I'm wondering, do we take our five minute break and then we come back for that or do we just push? Because I think we can actually be done in 30 minutes. Hi Rita, great, great, great presentation, time. Garabo. I, I'm going to excuse myself, please. I'm going to the physio. Oh, so sorry. I will I will be missing that. Yeah, I heard my ankle was skipping. So thank you so much. And I hope I'll catch up on okay. what I've missed. Thank okay. you. Thanks a lot, Jeanette. What we'll do, we normally upload these videos onto YouTube and then we share them on the different um, WhatsApp uh, groups. So you will definitely get it to see what you missed in the last 30 minutes. Um, so I'm seeing we take a break. So let's do, can we do a five minute break and then we come back five minutes or 10 minutes? Five. Five minutes, okay, counting now. Thank you, ladies. We were just talking about or actually, we're just talking about um, the importance of keeping a register. Can you just 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 remind people why it's important to keep an attendance register over and beyond reporting for the dashboard? Yes, thank you, Ma. Um, please hold on for me. No? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So keeping an attendance register is important. Number one, as a cohort lead, you need to know how many goals you graduated. Um, normally with G4G, we do graduations where we have, we give the ladies certificates, we give them gifts. So that also is easier for your planning um, to say so-and-so girls actually graduated and um, so and so, somebody attended six sessions, meaning they'll get like an extra gift or a diary or something. So it makes planning easier. It keeps you in touch as a cohort lead on what ex what your numbers are and how you can best improve for the following year for your next cohort. Be good. Okay. Um, thank you very much. 
Okay, so now we're coming to the interactive session. Um, I'm going to walk you quickly through the dashboard and then we're also going to do a little bit of the homework. But by a show of hands, um, how many people were able to download the dashboard? Mercy, thank you. Anyone else? Tobile, fantastic. Siadimo, woo! I'm very proud. Cheryl, I'm very happy. I'm very happy. Um, so uh, Matilda as well. Okay. How many of you will be able to share your screen? Because for example, I know Matilda, um, I think Matilda said she downloaded it, but I think she's on the phone. How many of you will be able to show it using, okay, Matilda, you're able to show using your, if I allow you to share your screen, you'll be able to show. Matilda, may I hear from you? Uh, no, I won't you be able to. Okay, then take your hand down, please. Okay, Cheryl I'm says. I'm trying to take it down, sorry. <laughs> okay, I think Cheryl, Cheryl, you were able to download onto your computer? Yes. Fantastic, okay. So the, a couple of you, Mercy, Cheryl, uh, Siadimo, I actually will be encouraging you to share your screen and click through um, because that's the, that's the one way that you're going to get familiar with this, with the, with, with the, with the dashboard. So let me show you. I'm going to do a quick walkthrough, and then we will come back and I will ask for volunteers who will share their screen and they will click through um, the dashboard. So let me share with you. Okay. Um, Okay, so you can see, so this is where the dashboard is housed. I want you to kindly watch and see, and I'm, I've, I've not pre-opened it intentionally um, because this is a common mistake that people make. So when you go to the Dropbox link that I sent you, remember I said, download it. Do not open it on the Dropbox link because on the Dropbox link, you won't get those dynamic features, okay? So this is what happens when you try and open the dashboard. It's, remember, it's heavy. It's sitting with a lot of information. It has to open up a number of pages. So sometimes it takes a bit of time um, to open up. OK, so this is the message you're going to get. It doesn't mean you're, you're downloading a virus or anything. It's asking you, do you want to enable the macros or to disable them? The macros are the things that allow that dynamic and the drill down nature. If I say disable, you will only see the front page of the Excel document. If I say enable, it means that the activation is going to be um, enabled, okay? So remember I talked about the landing page. So typically this is where um, you come to. It might look different on your machine. I use a Mac and the Mac guards against things that it's not familiar with. So what you view and what I view might be a little bit different. So mine always gives me these security warnings. You can see it's asking me the same question again. Do you want to enable? And I'm going to say, yes, I want to enable, um, I want to enable the content. Um, I also want to optimize how well I see the dashboard. So on a Mac, the best that I will be able to do, so that little button, sorry, let me show you again, this little button over here, it's to, for, to allow the dashboard to go into presentation mode. On a Mac, it's not optimal. If you're not using a Mac, you will get a much better view than me. For me, all it does is that it, 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 it slightly removes some of the things that are um, up here within Excel. Um, on a non-Mac, it actually gets rid of um, all these things that are up here. Okay, so here's our dashboard. Uh, remember, we said um, the number of countries, the number of mentees, all of that you will be able to you will be able to see. Um, you can optimize in terms of size. Um, if you're struggling um, to see it better, just be careful that there's some information that you might not see at the bottom. I'm doing it bigger for us to be able to follow. So this is similar to where I took the screenshots from. Um, so this is our landing page. Which dashboard are we looking at? I want to hear voices. 
mentees. Mentees dashboard, yeah, the pink dashboard. And mm -hmm. this is where we said we see overall information uh, per country. We can see the partic registered participation, graduation rate. Remember the demi cohort that uh, uh, Oratile took us uh, to, it automatically calculates your percentages and we can see the average of all the countries of mentees that have graduated and we can also see our performance. Now, because we're in the live dashboard, um, all I need to do is to click. So for example, if I say I want to go to South Africa, it will take me to South Africa. And we are able to see the dashboard for South Africa in the year 2022. So in South Africa in 2022, we had 11 cohorts. We graduated 202 mentees. And you're able to see where those mentees came from. So this is the beauty about accessing the dashboard live, that when you hover over the numbers, you can actually see what the exact number is. So for example, now for the University of Pretoria, you can see that 83 mentees registered, whereas when you hover over participated, 45 participated. So you can already see there was a big drop off rate from the 83 that registered to the 45 that participated. The good news is once they started participating, it looked like they attended four to six sessions and 42 of them graduated. That graduation rate is indicated over here. So we're able to very quickly see. Um, so you can very quickly compare and say, oh, okay, in 2023, the best performing cohort was Mamelodi, looking at their 94% graduation rate. You can, however, also see that they were a relatively small cohort, right? 16 girls participated. You can very quickly see that the, the cohort with um, the biggest number of um, uh, participants, um, it was the Trevor Huddleston uh, uh, Center. They had 44 girls that participated. University of Pretoria actually just won them by one. It, they had 45. Um, but when it came to graduation, the cohort that produced the biggest number was um, graduation. Graduation is the last bar. It was uh, University of Pretoria. So the beauty about it is then you can play around with the data um, for yourself. OK, so that is the number of mentees. Remember, you can now do this for all the countries. You can say, let me go and see Kuwait. Every time you want to go back to the main dashboard, you just click this button and it will take you back to the main dashboard. You can say, oh my goodness, these Ugandans who have 447, let me go and look at their data. So it, 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 you know, it, it, it tightens it up in, the, in an effort to have everything coming together, but you can still see um, everything and you can see the 447 girls and where they came from. So that is the mentees dashboard. Remember, this is the 2022 data that you're seeing up front. You might say, wait a moment, I want to see what the performance was historically. So the dashboard is able to show, show you that. So you're able to say, for instance, in, in the interests of South Africa, we can come back and say, how many girls participated in South Africa before 2022? We can see here it was 584. How many graduated? It was 394. So if, for instance, when I was presenting the results um, at the board meeting, at the time I was still country team lead, um, and the board wanted to know, the board in South Africa wanted to know, wait a moment, how many girls have graduated uh, from G4G in South Africa? I would take the 394, I don't have the numbers in my head, I would take the 394 from the previous years, and then I would come here and I would say uh, 200 plus 202, that graduated in, uh, in 2022. And we have a total of 596 mentees that have graduated. So this is how you use your data. Now, that, that was about the mentees data. To go to the mentors data, you click on this tab. So remember all this activity, if you have not enabled your macros, you will not be able to cut across all these different pages. So here we are now, we are on, the mentors, we're on the mentors dashboard. Um, so for example, here we might say, let's go take a look at Botswana. We can see overall, um, they have um, 73 mentors that participated in cohorts and 50 of them uh, participated, sorry, 50 of them 
attend, uh, supported in at least four cohorts, uh, four sessions per cohort. So you're able to say, okay, let's go and see where, what the activity was like. So you can see the 10 cohorts that were active in Botswana, and you can see the number of mentors that completed and the number of mentees, the, sorry, mentors that participated. So you're able to say, okay, what happened here at Dream Team? We can see 14. Again, if you hover, remember, because this is a live dash, uh, dashboard, you're able to see the actual number. So you can see 14 participated, but only seven mentors made uh, att uh, attended sessions and supported mentoring um, uh, uh, that at, at least four to um, uh, six times. So just like the previous, the standard rule is, if you want to go back to the main page, you simply click that button, you will be able to go and see Lesotho. Um, if you want to, you can see they only had one cohort, they had three active mentors, so you're able to compare across countries. Um, now, similar to the mentees dashboard, if you want to look at the historical performance for mentors, you will simply click historical performance and you're able to see um, what has happened in the different countries. So for example, Niger, which is not part of the 2022 dashboard, had reported data from an earlier period. And you can see that that country has 48 mentors that were trained and all 48 mentors um, did become um, active and supported um, in at least four different sessions. So you're able to see a variety of information and you can go back. Remember I said unique for the mentors database um, is the, the information on the number of mentors trained. So the information that Caravo reports, um, this is where it comes to. We're able to see that, uh, for example, in, in South Africa, we, are, we had, um, as of this quarter, so this one adds up, it adds up, it adds up. You remember that question that said, as of this quarter, what is the total number of mentors that have been trained? Um, that number comes and gets added over here. So we can see 244 for South Africa. <coughs> We have 472 for um, Uganda. Malaysia has its number, Lesotho has its number. So you can see the problem of countries not reporting. The reason we tell countries to report whether or not they have trained mentors in between January and March 2020, uh, 2023 is because if you report, sorry, this is a 2022 dashboard, whether or not they had trained mentors in between October and December. It means whether or not you've trained, just send that report through so that your number can show up. If you're not reporting your mentors trained data, it will not reflect. So even if there's not been any new mentor trained in between say July, 2022 and December, 2022, still submit your report. You will be reporting zeros, but at least your data comes through. And when the dashboard is being generated, it will pick up that result coming from whichever country that is, okay? So this is, this is the dashboard. I don't know whether there's anything I have not shown, but I think I've shown you the different subsets. So I am now going to drop my dashboard and I'm going to kindly ask for a volunteer so that we can do our homework together. Or maybe, are there any questions at this stage? Any questions? None? Doesn't okay. look like it, ma'am. Okay. Um, so let's do this. Um, can I please get a volunteer? Is there someone who is willing to open up the dashboard on their side? Uh, because I'm going to ask you to help us find some information. And I know the people who confirmed were Cheryl. Mercy, unfortunately, is now. Okay, Cheryl, please. Go for it. Please share your, 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 your dashboard. Fantastic. Well done, Cheryl. Okay. Um, great. So were you able to, nav yes, please click that. Please click that. Fantastic. Do you, Cheryl, do you use a Mac? No. 
Yeah, I'm using a Windows. Okay. Um, yeah. so, so so your presentation, but the, in terms of a, the, the machine, you're not using a, a Mac, huh? An Apple. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is where everyone else outperforms <laughs> people who <laughs> use the, the Apple. It comes out so much better. Um, you can see it has taken over. It's even looking like a nice PowerPoint presentation right now. Um, so Cheryl, thank you very much for sharing your screen. Um, we want you on the mentees dashboard, which I can see you're at. Um, mm -hmm. So let's keep this interactive. Some people can speak if you want to. Um, if not, you can put your answers in the chat box. So Cheryl, can you yes. please help us uh, find out how many mentees were registered in, in Botswana? Where do you see your answer? Okay. Registered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so your registered is actually on your main page. Just, um, just go back if you don't mind. Um, that arrow, the arrow at the at the top, top right hand. Uh, no, the other side. Uh, okay. Above that one, above info field. The um, little, the little arrow. You see where two March twenty twenty three is. Um, Why am I um, looking at? Look at the date uh, updated to March 2023. Mm -mm. No, no, at the top, just above info field five. Three above what? Okay. Okay. Yeah. There's um, an arrow um, just above that. No, no, no. The arrow just above um, info field five, next to updated to March 2023. Yeah, so um, there's this bit, um, since I'm on presentation mode, there's this uh, bit that appears on top with the mute start video. So I'm trying to see if I can um, push that aside. I'm oh, able to it's, see it's, it beyond yeah, that. it's interrupting you. Um, yeah. can you. Can you drag it away? Just drag it, push it to the side. It will move. Ah, great. Okay. Can you see that little arrow now? Yeah, uh -huh, perfect. Great, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, perfect. Just click that. Okay. okay. Yeah, so when you're looking for registered data, do you see where it is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. So how many do we see? Uh, 235. Okay, so this is the tip for you. When you're looking for summary data, always look at the main page, okay? Um, mm -hmm. Question to Cheryl and anyone else. How many mentees participated in Portugal? Participated. 42. Very good. How many mentees graduated in Uganda? Uganda graduated. 47. Fantastic, okay. Um, and what was the graduation rate for Brunei? Okay, so Brunei was 86%. Fantastic. So the lesson here is anytime you're looking for quick summary information about a country, you stay on the main page. Are we together? So now let's, yes. let's yeah. test it. Okay. Um, we're now going to investigate country data we're going to go down to cohort level so cheryl in kuwait yes so i click on kuwait exactly in kuwait how many cohorts were active and graduated mentees so um how many cohorts do you see? One cohort. Fantastic, yeah. So remember that it will present the number of cohorts first. So if, so if we get out of uh, Kuwait and we go back to the main page, we can compare that uh, to another country. Um, let's look at Botswana. Very good. How many cohorts participated in Botswana? And this, even nine. if you look at the, the, the nine. where do you see the nine? 
How did you get uh, your answer? At the top. Yeah. At the top. Yes, yes, you've been paying attention. So question, um, and the rest of you can participate by putting the answers in the chat box. Um, Cheryl, which cohort had the highest graduation rate? So let's make sure we can see all the cohorts nicely. Thank you. Which cohort had the highest graduation rate? What are you looking at? Young professionals cohort. The highest graduation oh, rate. Um, Anyone else? The Marang. Is that Marang? Why do you say Marang? Go up. It appears. Go up. Is, is that the registered? Okay, the, the pinks are different. I'm sorry, graduated, okay. Yes, how it's do you know that Aha, uh -huh. why is it Orapa? 95% uh, uh, graduation rate. Fantastic, yes, mm -hmm. because when you compare it to all the others, the others are below the 95%, right? right? Yeah. Okay, makes Fantastic. sense. Yes, yes. Um, we can go back, um, Cheryl. This time, let us go to Zimbabwe. Excellent. So in Zimbabwe, which cohort had the lowest graduation rate? <laughs> it's a trick question, huh? Mm. Anyone? Anyone? Ways, what, how many cohorts do we have? Let's always start there. How many cohorts do we have yes. in Zimbabwe? We have two. We have two. And they all graduated. And, yeah, but and what rate did they graduate at? Uh, I can't see 100%. 100%. Fantastic. Um, Siadimo, you can't see. Eh? You're saying you can't see? Yeah, the, the number. Okay, you can't can see, see the number. the colors very well, but the number is... The numbers. Okay. Okay, so... Um, Cheryl, let me show you. If you go down in because in Excel, just go down and let's see if we can expand your your presentation. Or maybe we can't. Just scroll down. Can you see your? Or, no, because you're in presentation mode. So you know that in regular Excel, you would be able to you would be able to increase the size of your font so that Siadimo would have been able to see it. So this was a trick question. Um, I asked which one had the lowest graduation rate, whereas in Zimbabwe, both cohorts had a 100% graduation rate. Um, Cheryl, let's go back to the main page. Thank you. And then the last question I'm going to ask you is going to come from South Africa. Thank you. Okay, how many cohorts do we have in South Africa? 11. 11. Can you tell me what was the graduation rate from Studio 353? Uh, 93%. Fantastic, okay. Okay, um, right. So thank you so much, Cheryl. What, do you, what does it feel like? You think you can navigate and you're comfortable with it? Yeah, it feels actually, it feels, it feels good navigating it. I actually like how the platform is really interactive and easy to navigate around. So, Excellent. yeah. Excellent. And hopefully you will be able to do this, huh? Yes, I will. Okay, so in future, it means once we have, um, once we have updated the dashboard, like once the quarter one uh, 2023 dashboard is out, what our objective is, is that we're going to be sending it out to everyone, every, every mentor who is interested, you will get it, you will download it and you'll be able to do the same thing, okay? So please keep using the dashboard, give us feedback so that we can see how to improve on it. I'm asking for a second volunteer. Anyone else that wants to try? So that now we can try and look at uh, drill down to mentors data, anyone? Who else was able to download it into Excel? Siadimo, were you able to? Let's try. Yes, let's try. Okay, please share your screen. Uh, how do I share now? At, at the bottom, there's a little, it's, it's like a square. Yeah. 
with uh, an arrow inside it. Uh, I should go back. Yes, click on that. And then you will share your... With a, sorry, which one? Um, at the bottom, which if one? you're looking at Zoom. I've you seen know, I the arrow, the green, the green yes, arrow. The green box yeah. with an arrow inside it. Click on that, yeah. it will be a share screen. And then yeah. you will probably be seeing many windows in front of you. Yeah. Click on the, the dashboard one and say share. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. Fantastic. Well done. Now, let us also optimize your, your viewing. You see that uh, the, the four arrows at the top right hand corner, you can click on that. Yes. Fantastic. So click on that. Uh, Cannot run the macro. Yes, you had not enabled I your. Had not enabled. Oh, yes. Okay. So what you can do, you can close your your the the dashboard. Then you're going to open it again, and we're going to enable for you. Okay. So uh, don't you can say don't save. Yeah. Okay. So close it. Don't save. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So you can go to where you had um so maybe stop sharing your screen again just so that it's not confusing for you oh. Oh. okay yeah she's streaming so I'm stop sharing mm -hmm. yeah. oh. it's taking me forward not backwards mm -hmm. Um, okay, fantastic. Okay, so now you need to go back to where you down had you you had downloaded um, the I dashboard. Mean, I had downloaded it. Okay, now try opening it and remember that when you open it, enable the content. Okay, let me try. Mm -hmm. I think I went, I downloaded and opened immediately. Oh yeah. So it, this is very good. It's it this is it's all the practical lessons that show us, you know, what to do and what not to do. So where do I go? I go back to download. Y yes, wherever you had, I don't know, had you had you saved it anywhere I, or had you just downloaded it? I had saved it to my documents. Okay. Yes, yeah, so go to your documents. The name of the document, it will say 2022 G4G dashboard. That's what you look for. Uh, so this example G4G attendance, example G4G registration, mm -hmm. dashboard. Uh -huh. It's, it should start with the number 2022. Cheryl, what was the what what name did it download with? Um, the name of the file? Yes. Um 2022 G4G dashboard. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah so, version three. I've got it. Yes. Now try opening it and remember be very careful as you're opening to enable. The macros. Where do I find the label? Uh, when you try and open the document, it's going to automatically ask, it should automatically ask you that question. Mm. It hasn't asked you? No, it hasn't. It, 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 it just guess. opened it. Yeah. And then I when you look. The way I saved it. Oh. And when you look on the top right hand side, sometimes it says enable. It's, it, sometimes it opens and then you still have to enable. You don't see anything yes. asking. Does I, it ask you? It, it asks me to enable. Uh huh. Uh, which I did. Okay. Enable. Okay. So now but, help us share your screen and then we'll see if we can walk through the dashboard with you. And also a note for everyone, 
um, the, the, the dashboard requires a full Excel. Um, we know we deal with a lot of students and sometimes people have um, the, the, free micro, the free Excel and sometimes, not sometimes, the free Excel will not allow you to, to, to do these types of things. Or if for instance, you have not updated your Excel with the latest version, sometimes that's where we have problems. Okay, now okay. we can see the dashboard. Now let's try and see if it's drilling down. Um, uh, could you try, 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 try clicking on, on uh, Uganda? Let's see what happens or whichever country you want. Let's test it. Yeah. Yes, your macros are enabled, madam. Oh, so you yes. can, yes, you can click that arrow at the top. Let us go back to the front. Yes, that one, great. So now, Ms. Yadimo, you are going to take us to the mentors dashboard. Do you see the button that says go to mentors? Yes, there you go. Okay, so now I would like to find out how many were mentors were active and completed mentoring um, under the following cohorts? In Malaysia, mm -hmm. just scroll a little bit so that we can see optimally. There's a cohort, G4G X Tailors. How many mentors were active and completed train, train, training? Sorry, mentoring. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, so when you hover over, how many? How many mentors? 16 mentors completed. Completed, uh huh. And uh, 17 participated. participated. Yes, mm. this is the one I was saying. I think in this year's version, we're going to flip them around so that we have participated on the left hand side and completed on the right hand side. It's more logical that way. But thank you very much. You, 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 you can see the way it highlights. The moment you hover over a bar, you get the actual information, right? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Okay, let's go back. Go to the, yes, fantastic. So now we are going to go to Kenya. So um, hover, um, move over, yeah, ah, perfect. Click on Kenya. We now want to know how many mentors were active and completed in magnetic, magnetic cohort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah here we go. Hundred yes, percent. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 How many? Mm -hmm. Four and four, four isn't it? Four. Yes, fantastic. Okay. Now let's go back to the front page. Okay. Very good. Now we want to look at the mentors trained data. Do you see the little button that says mentors trained? Yes. Aha, uh -huh. fantastic. Okay. Can you tell me, as of December 2022, how many mentors had been trained in Uganda? So scroll down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Over. 472. Fantastic. Yeah. What about South Africa? 244. Excellent. And Zimbabwe? There is no Zimbabwe here. Exactly. <laughs> I think you know by now, I'm always having this. But you, you know why I put that there is, imagine you're the country team lead for Zimbabwe, and you're like, yeah, let me go and see how many mentors have been trained. And imagine your disappointment, you come here looking for your country and it's not there. So the point I'm trying to make is that if you don't report, the dashboard cannot tell you, yeah? So you can close and you can go back to the front page. Yes, okay. Okay, so we are done. That was the homework. Um, yeah, well, how do you feel, Siadimo? I'm very proud I of you. I feel clever. <laughs> can you believe it? I can't believe I can do it. <laughs> I, I, I must tell everyone, so everyone, Siadimo is a director with G4G, but she's one of those people, she never wants to be the one to touch. She wants Rita to be the one to be pressing and things. So um, I must tell you, I'm so proud of my clever friend, who I know is very clever, but she just, I think has been a bit intimidated by technology, but I think it means I Siadimo, am. the next time, 
when I send you guys the dashboard before the board meeting, you're going to come super clever. You might even present the data ahead of M and E, right? I'm going to show off. <laughs> <laughs> and we must boast. We will boast to Podo. We will tell her that uh, we have a surprise presenter. So yeah. So I mean, ladies, I, I don't know. So we this is it. We have come to the end. I don't know what your feelings are like about the dashboard. Um, any comments? This is where we really want to hear from you. Um, let's hear feedback. What did you not see? What do you think we should do better? What can we, as the support team from m and &E South Africa, what can we do to inspire people to report? Or just general comments? I'll keep quiet for a while. Let me hear from different people. Hi, Rita. Hi, Mercy. Yes, uh, I think I have three comments. Uh, first is uh, thank you for taking us through um, the session. It's been quite interactive. I think for me, it's uh, so with Kenya, we have the MND committee. Uh, but I, at the back of my head, I've been wondering how do we better engage the MND committee? Like, this is really nice that I see some of the members have been able to attend this session. Uh, but moving forward, because uh, as the coordinator in Kenya, what I've been able to do is reach out to the directors. We have Betty who fills out uh, the mentors trained, the mm -hmm. quarterly trained form, and uh, Mary who fills the other form. Oh, no, sorry, for the cohort, we do reach out to the cohort leads directly. But other than that, uh, you find that we have mentors who are interested in joining the MND team, but like how to involve them actively is where uh, I kind of find it hard. Um, the second thing is I was actually able to open the dashboard using um, free Excel. It was a bit, uh, uh, there's a bit of a way around it, just going to settings and saying, I trust the source and you're able to, to actually use the, the dashboard interactively. Okay. Um, I got the third thing, but I'll let you know as soon as I remember. But yeah, I'm keen really to know how we can better engage uh, the MND volunteers that we get to add in the group. Okay. Um, so have you 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 have a WhatsApp group you routinely engage, yeah? With with the group? Have you got like a little WhatsApp group within Kenya? Yes, yes, we do. Okay. What do you talk about or what do you do as the MND community? Now that's the thing. I have uh, engaged mentors who are interested in MND, and mm -hmm. for example, Eric is one of our new mentors, right? Okay. Um, so in my head, I'm wondering how do we move forward with this? Because um, from a high level, I get to engage with the directors in filling out the forms and the cohort leads, uh, mm -hmm. but with the MND team, I'm not too sure how. Uh, yeah, because I mean the dashboard was um, shared. And that was about it. So I'm trying to see how I can better engage both the directors and the MND volunteer team. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's about creating ownership. Find things that you can do that pe when people do them, they see the value coming out of it. So, for example, the ME team, you can train your cohorts. Huh? All these presentations, we're going to share them with you. This same video, the one from March, we're uploading it means and we give you the materials as well it means that rather than you know waiting for for the next training you team kenya m and e can actually now do this same training that you've seen orachile karabu and myself doing you can go and run it in kenya so first of all that means in your own small community you can do it the other thing is share the results of what people do so if a cohort coordinator is reporting and they're not seeing okay i reported then what if you share the deliverable back and you say, hey, you know, um, um, a team, team, team ABC, you know, you did very well, your graduation rates were good, people will appreciate. And that means that then you're beginning to give a slight, uh, you know, like, a, um, a, a, like more commitment and education to the group. We, as the ME committee in South Africa, we have got our little agenda. We all are busy, but every quarter we have certain things that we schedule for ourselves. We also have a portion different members of our m and &E committee to support different cohorts. So for example, Orachile will support cohort ABC, 
Karabu is going to support X, Y, Z. Rita will support, um, um, you know, um, v, VW, um, X, that type of thing. So it also means that your committee members feel a little bit of value. So it's a number of things that I've spoken about. You decide what it is you think can keep your members engaged, not burnt out. Because if you give people too many things to do as well, then they might pull away. So things I would say, maybe together as a team, get together, organize your own m and training for G4G cohort leaders and focal persons within cohorts um, in Kenya. That might be the first thing that you do. The other thing that you do is make sure you review the dashboard, you're sharing it on your Kenya platform. Have you seen how well the cohorts are doing? Let people see the value of what you're doing and let the cohorts see where their data comes out. Baby steps, start off with that and I think it might help. I don't know whether that makes sense and my team might be able to add. So much sense, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, Alex, uh, any ideas? <laughs> Sorry. Because uh, the other thing is at the evaluation bit, we are also still trying to figure out, um, because I know it's Team Kenya, evaluation is meant to take place after every six months, mm -hmm. but we have we are, we are yet to start out that process. So again, it's figuring it's out. Not, it's not every six months, eh? you'll, you'll die. <laughs> it is once a year. And um, that's supposed to be the next training we are, we're going to be running, but it's not going to be in a while. I personally have a really bad schedule coming up, um, but we shall see when to do that training. Um, now, again, don't overfill your plates. Eh? Evaluation is very heavy. I'm seeing Oratile. The evaluation, it takes a lot out of you. So get something right so that you're doing small things and you know people are walking behind you. You do another small thing, there are even more supporters behind you. Focus first on monitoring. If you get monitoring right, the evaluation discipline shall come in. So I would say that. Oratile, any additional tips for Team Kenya? I think you've mentioned, you've, you've covered most of it. It's just taking it slowly. Remembering that you're only starting your m &E team now and not overworking people because data tends to be too much to deal with. So mm -hmm. like Mamita said, get maybe somebody in cohort responsible for a particular cohort, then they can actually have the data extracted from what the cohort is. So it makes everything a lot easier for everybody in Team Kenya. I think mm -hmm. that would also work. Yeah. So take these trainings we have, take our materials, you go and train. Um, then they will start to see you as leaders of M&E &E, um, and people who know things and, and do the trial run uh, the way we have done it. I, I, think, I think when people see what you're really trying to do and when they see the outputs of what you're doing, um, it shall be helpful. Huh? And then I had promised that I would share a couple of, 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 of things. I am going to share the, um, I want to share the annual report um, I'm going to put it in the in the in the Dropbox folder um, right now, so that you can so that you can see like the types of things we do that in in South Africa, so that people think, oh, okay, these guys actually do some work. They actually um, they, they they there's some value addition um, that they're doing. So here is the annual report uh, that we prepared for South Africa. I'm putting it. I'm putting it in the WhatsApp chat. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? Anyone? Siadimo, thank you so much. I see your comments. You're saying thank you to the ME team. Uh, the training is pragmatic and easy to follow. Thanks. We really appreciate you taking the time, Siadimo. Um, important people like you normally don't have two hours to put aside on a Saturday. We really appreciate your participation. Any other comments from anyone else? Any other questions? Prudence, I love the fact that you come for all these trainings. Um, so thank you so much for saying that you learn through the m and &E trainings. Um, I agree with you. We learn these things mainly for girls for girls, but this is stuff that you can take to any part of your work life. It's stuff that you can take to your, your office. You can run projects with dashboards. You can run projects with the same principles we are talking about. So the way I see it is that, yes, we are training you for G4G, but nothing stops you from taking this, these lessons and skills that you're learning here and applying them in other parts of, um, of your work and life. Okay, any other comments or do we close?
Okay. Let us. Um, okay. Mava. Uh huh. All right, Chile. I think I would like to say thank you to everybody who made the time and pushed up and listened and interacted with us. It it really made it worthwhile. So thank you so so much. Yes, and I echo that. Thank you very much to everyone. If you have any questions, please you let us know. Um, our job is to keep responding to you. In the last session, you said, you know, you want a bit more interaction and we told you it will happen here. It has happened here. Next time round, what we are dreaming of is that we actually get more countries to be the ones leading the presentations. The Mercies, uh, Cheryl's, we're looking forward to that. So um, thank you very much. Have a wonderful weekend. And to, I think most of us have a nice extended long weekend because I think 1st of May is a public holiday uh, for most of us, right? So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Have Bye-bye. a good one. Bye bye. Okay. Okay. Everybody for you, I did your shake, shake, bell, oh,